the battery day and the third quarter deliveries came and went and the Tesla stock price really didn't do anything, right? It's still pretty much where it was before both of these events. So how do you trade Tesla from here? And what happened at that battery day? All right, let's roll the intro. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Martin Zeman. I'm gonna give you today three different ways on how you can successfully trade Tesla and make money. But before we get there, let's recap for two minutes uh, the events that we had seen the past few days from Tesla. So first of all, the third quarter delivery numbers. Uh, really four figures tell you the whole story here. The first number is 139,300. That's the amount of cars that Tesla delivered in the third quarter, which is the record, right? When you look at the chart, quarter by quarter of the last few years, this was the best number since the last quarter of 2019, which was the last quarter pre-COVID, right? Uh, so 139,000 cars and change uh, is, is an excellent number, but it really didn't beat the expectations. The second number to remember is 318,000. That's the amount of cars that Tesla delivered so far in 2020. Now that leads me to number three. The third number to remember here is the half a million cars, the target that Tesla aims to achieve in terms of deliveries for the whole 2020. Which leads me to number four, and that's the amount of cars that Tesla needs to deliver between today and the end of the year, and that's 182,000 cars, which is still achievable um, as per Elon, right? But I think the bigger event here was really the battery day. And what really happened there? Uh, you know, this huge buildup just did not deliver, right? Now, was anything revolutionary announced during that very detailed and honest presentation, uh, like uh, the, the million mile battery? No, uh, you know, there was a lot of expectations built up to the event, but none of the revolutionary kind of stuff that people expected uh, came up and therefore it was a disappointment. I'm not going to go in detail when it comes to, you know, what was presented on that day. But the first link below this video is a 90 minute uh, detailed discussion uh, among battery experts uh, when they analyze in detail really the technology and the announcements and kind of how realistic everything is when it comes to the achievements that, uh, that Elon discussed on that day. But there's two numbers to remember from that presentation. The first number is 56. 56% 56 is the amount of cost savings that Elon Musk talk, uh, talked about they can achieve on in the battery production. They said uh, they could achieve this in three years and he discussed at length about all the technology that doesn't exist yet today um, that they have to invent and they have to figure out how to achieve these savings. So 56% is, is, a, is kind of the first headline number there. The second headline number is $25,000. A $25,000 car kind of reminds me back to 100 years ago when Ford came with a T-line of mass-produced uh, affordable cars for the masses, right? Uh, the, the, the famous Ford. Uh, and here we would have a $25,000 EV car by Tesla, um, hopefully achieved in, in the near future. But what does that really mean, that $25,000? That $25,000 really is all about the battery cost, right? Uh, battery um, costs are uh, one third of the cost of the car. So really the savings in the battery area is where these savings and, and these targets can be achieved. Now $25,000 equates to $100 per kilowatt hour. That's really how you have to look at it, $100 per kilowatt hour. Now today, Tesla is at about $150 per kilowatt hour. They have to move from 150 down to about 80 to 85 at the cell level to be at $100 per kilowatt hour at the pack level, right? You have the individual cells produced together, put, put together in that pack, and that pack needs to be at $100 per kilowatt hour to get to that $25,000 uh, price tag. Now, was this something revolutionary that, that they announced that, that they are going to get there in three years? No. Uh, GM said the same thing. They'll be able to be uh, at the same technology level at, at that $100 per kilowatt hour mark uh, in three years as well. They, they talk about a five to 600 mile cars with uh, doubling the um, uh, energy efficiency of, of the battery packs. Volkswagen did the same thing. But Tesla deserves all the credit uh, because they are the most vocal about it, um, the most detailed, and you don't see other OEMs, other, other car producers 
uh, give you this level of detail and honesty in terms of uh, presentation when it comes to what they have achieved and where they're going. Finally, the real question is how do you successfully keep making money on the stock? How do you successfully trade Tesla uh, into the end of the year here? I think we have to recognize that Tesla has gone up more than 400% in 2020. It's been a crazy ride. You know, over the summer leading up to the split, the battery day has just been extremely volatile mostly one-way trade uh, with uh, really some consolidation that's kind of coming up right now. But I think, I think the stock performance here really is a testament to the market kind of realizing that Tesla is here to stay, right? That they are somehow becoming profitable and um, that they have plans and they deliver on them. Uh, that's kind of the main point that, that Elon Musk and Tesla finally uh, convince the market that they can deliver on the expectation and on the promises, uh, unlike companies like Nikola, for example. But I think, I think everybody's also gonna agree somehow that another 400% plus over the next six months is unrealistic. So I think we're entering a, a, a kind of a consolidation phase here where the stock is gonna trade more on a two-way kind of market uh, of uh, still a lot of volatility likely uh, depending on the announcements and tweets and, and progress, but uh, likely a consolidation phase is coming. When you think about the valuation for Tesla here, we are, you know, this is the beginning of October. We're somewhere around 380 to 400 billion dollars, depending on which day of the week you're looking at the valuation numbers. But uh, considering they still only really make half a million cars, a lot is already built into the stock price, right? Yeah, when you kind of consider the profitability targets that this kind of valuation has to justify. And by the way, uh, thinking about General Motors, which make many more cars and are somehow also catching up in the EV race. Uh, they are only valued at 10% of what Tesla is valued at. They are somewhere around the 40 billion mark. So the real question is, what is the next catalyst for Tesla and for an outperformance in the stock market? What is the next kind of reason that's going to really push it higher past that 500 mark into the 6, 700 uh, per share uh, price range? You know, you have, uh, I believe, three events over the next three months that kind of are on calendar. You have um, the financial results for the third quarter, which are coming in a few weeks, which hopefully will signal another quarter of profitability for Tesla. That's going to be the, that's going to be the fifth quarter uh, in a row, which leads me to the second catalyst, a potential actual inclusion in the S&P 500, uh, which could come in December, right? Which would be a huge push uh, for the stock because then you'll have all the index managers and asset managers that will be forced to buy Tesla because it has to be in their portfolios uh, because they track the S&P 500. So, so I think the S&P 500 inclusion is coming, uh, hopefully in December, but that's another potential catalyst. And, and finally, the full year deliveries, right? If, if Elon Musk and the company manage to beat um, the half a million uh, cars delivered in 2020, that's gonna be a huge milestone as well. So how do you finally, how do you actually make money here? So look, there's three ways, uh, I think, to successfully keep trading uh, this consolidation phase that's kind of ahead of us. First of all, if you are long at this point uh, and want to stay long, uh, and if you had been long from you know below 300, I think it's smart to take some profits, some money off the table, keep a core position and trade around that position as we kind of trade this this range that's, that's likely expected over the next uh, couple of months or so. I think a good range is somewhere between 350 and 450. That, that $100 range kind of over the last couple of weeks, uh, three weeks has proven like at 450, it doesn't really push any higher. And uh, once we get to below 380, uh, we start to find really uh, some kind of a bottom and buyer. So that $100 range, I think is a good range to trade uh, tactically around some kind of a core position that you keep for that moment where you have that catalyst that materializes. Now, if you think that Tesla is too expensive, the second way to uh, get involved uh, profitably, I think, is uh, figure out a level where you're comfortable buying Tesla. Whether it's 340, 320 or 300, you can start selling puts uh, with strikes at these levels. And um, if the stock price gets down there and below and uh, these options uh, that you are gonna be selling uh, get exercised, right? You're selling a put, you're selling the, the right for somebody to sell at the price. Uh, you will have to be buying at that price. At that point, you're getting involved at a price where you're comfortable. And in the meantime, if they don't get exercised, you're generating really nice income. You're generating a premium that you keep uh, 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 receiving as you sell these puts, waiting for the stock uh, to, to drop to these levels and for these options to get exercised and, and finally for you to 
quote unquote buy at uh, really good levels. Uh, and the third way I think uh, that's that kind of makes sense is really for people that are looking at Tesla more as a long term investment. You know, if, if you if you believe that uh, that Tesla for you is um, really a long term play and you don't want to be trading actively in the market uh, and you want to keep that position here, uh, recognizing that, you know, taking out taking out the, the, those highs that we had seen over the summer, that five hundred dollar uh, per share mark. Uh, you could be selling calls against your position. You can you can write calls with strikes at 430, 440, 450 or, or even higher and keep receiving premiums um, and generate some income against the position that you hold. Right? That I think is a, is a third elegant way to generate some income and successfully make money in Tesla. Now, of course, um, the simple and normal rules for trading still apply. So you have to have some kind of a stop loss uh, in mind. Uh, and um, uh, have orders for, for stops uh, in case the story turns ugly for whatever reason this may be. Uh, and obviously, if, if you're writing calls against a long position, uh, you have to understand that uh, if these calls get uh, gets exercised, um, then uh, your long is going to disappear as well, right? Because you're going to be forced to sell against the person, the person that, um, that exercises the long call. So anyway, th these are, I think, elegant three elegant ways to kind of still make keep making money on Tesla because it's a it's a great story to follow uh, I think that the stock eventually will go higher uh, once we have a clear path to really more significant profitability that S&P 500 inclusion but in the meantime this consolidation phase that we are going through right now uh, can still be a, a profitable trading opportunity so that's it. Uh, thanks for uh, listening. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video if you enjoyed this conversation. And uh, to everybody that's invested in Tesla or that uh, is following the story and thinks about being invested in Tesla, uh, good luck you Tesla warriors out there. Um, I wish uh, everybody to uh, be profitable when they trade. Uh, obviously follow the normal trading rules and may, uh, do your due diligence carefully. And uh, again, good luck trading.